22nd, 24. Oh, yesterday. Bueller's North Main. Some guy was in there. And he was saying, um, it was insurance fraud, what those doctors did before. And that's why all those people were running around, making fun of her and helping out. It was a bunch of, it was insurance fraud. He's in there running his mouth. Go outside. Two ladies are screaming at these idiots. How dare these people run around making fun of her. We found that tape of that agent admitting to telling on her and the way he talked to her. None of this is funny. A lot of people scattered. You listen to the recorded line. It hits levels and not funny. Him admitting he met with all of them. Bullying me. Making me beg for my life. Acknowledging he knows why they're trying to kill me. Aiding and abetting it. Hmm? Knows about their scam of Pete. The rapist. The guy that been covering me with bruises. And, and why I was throwing up and infected how I didn't know how he's scamming me. It's part of the dark cartel. I didn't know anything. I thought the wild water was killing me. And then the scam of a doctor selling people's information, laughing at me, how I didn't know. I didn't know anything. And he, um, then, you know, <coughs> I had to tell him about my brother-in-law, Craig, and then he offers to take me and leave me somewhere with no money, and then he offers me an informant program. I already admitted several times he met with the Vegas and the church people. Okay. He, by federal law, he was to arrest all of them. The first day. Waco should have happened here. Not making fun of the rape victim being scammed by the drug cartel. <clears throat> and list me informant with money, immunity for life, even when you tell them, always put it back as if it never happened. You can't be legally charged for anything again for working this case, and you'll have that 5000 money um, a month to live on. Okay. Meant to no wrongdoing, I'll take care of everything in the end. But if you try to tell someone, I'll let you crazy and no one will help you. 14th Amendment cannot withhold protection. And you can't miss on my crazy. He was just like the prosecutor's office was laughing. That agent don't have enough authority to ask you to stay quiet. He's only a higher police officer. It takes a judge to take your freedom of speech away. No judge would sign his own arrest warrant for the Department of Justice to take his uh, take and put him in jail for taking people's constitutional rights away. You can tell whoever you want. That agent can't say a word. He's only bullying you to get away with it. <clears throat> Okay. Takes a judge in a jury trial. Okay. And he can't talk to you that way. You can get the money for working the case and only for working the case. Like they said during the case, they admitted right away they pranked me. They were drugging the hell out of me. I was waking up with bruises, throwing up, heart racing, uh, severely infected, or I come in and wash my hands, make something to eat and drink, go and use the bathroom, wash my hands better, come out, take a drink in the room, go to see in black. And I wake up with more marks. There's a whole list of amnesia drugs or sleepwalking. It's right on Google. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and photoshopping and washing in the other room. It's clicking and pasting. My friend Jim has a son that edits movies for a living. He said that he asked him if he could do all this. He said it's simple. He's got an app on his phone. What he does is he, he said he could take the shower seat and put it in another room. He could put a head on somebody else's head on your body. He could change your hair color, your eye color. It's simple. You can go back through your clothes and put a different outfit on you. 
and you could take words out of a sentence and another sentence, put it together, tape over, make a new tape, and it makes you look like you're saying something you didn't. Okay? That's where I talk to other police out of this area, a criminal attorney in the prosecutor's office. Then amnesia drugs, you're sleepwalking. They call them day rape drugs. They used to call it slipping a Mickey. Now they call it roofing. Okay? <clears throat> they all know it. They all know about them. They're my, they even call mind-controlling drugs. That they can drug people up and tell them to do stuff, say stuff, and they'll do what they're told. Like a zombie. Okay? Those ladies found that tape. If you listen to the tape of the recorded line, that agent admitted not only telling on me, I mean, I tell him somebody told on me the night before at Apostolic Church of Robert. He calls me a lot. I tell him about the guy that threatened to knife me at Giant Eagle. What's there a camera on the bench? I don't know. You say you're lying or a arrest I'm like, what? I said, well, he tried to kidnap me before. Terry Coverley said, let me tape her with her permission. Okay, I went to tell him. And he's like, oh, come on now. I met with that family in my office that lost her kid in that traffic accident. Fifteen years before, I had nothing to do with it. Went through 610 surgeries, muscles locked up, went to pain management, a bunch of crackpots. Falsely diagnosed me, gave me the wrong medicine, swelled from my feet to my brain was even swollen. Okay, sent me to a bunch of other doctors and do seizures. My heart valves enlarged. I started having many heart attacks. My thyroid shut down. My adrenal gland shut down. I gained 150 pounds. My legs are so big they're popping out of place. My knees. I'm on canes and braces. I'm dying from medical malpractice. And they were wanting to. Re they told me I have level two brain tumors. Want to remove my pituitary gland. Go to my regular doctor. Like whoa. We didn't even have a long talk what those doctors are doing, and how they're falsely diagnosing known for lying, ripping people off, making them sick. So they have to keep coming back and then wanting to do unnecessary procedures. Get an attorney, sue them, turn them over the state. It's immoral and unethical what they did to you. They almost killed them. And over nine months of slowly getting well, it was like four or five year old ordeal from all the surgeries to getting that sick, the nine months of getting well. In the middle of me getting well, and I'm almost well by April. I started in November of 2002. And by April of 2003, I'm almost well. Like they said, the only thing's wrong with you is your muscles locked up from all the surgeries. Everything else is caused by that. Okay. I had went from a 24 to a 16. And I'm almost well. May 3rd, 2003 is when Brian showed up and there was a church baseball game. And we had all stayed home. And said Phil was beating... Or Phil ran a stop sign in front of everyone until someone killed him and Tyler both. Okay. Well, I did a speed ratio on Google. He was doing way over 50 for that kid to get ejected. He was speeding, showing off. Ran a stop sign in until someone killed him and his grandson. Okay. Everybody couldn't believe he didn't even try to stop. Come July, I finished getting well. Took me nine months. Nothing to do with nothing. Come November, my sister Linda was married to that occult leader's son. Well, she still is. And she, one day she was out and she seen him with this girl, Katie. And she started, every time he left, she'd follow him. She got caught one day. Came up to me. At uh, church, I was following him again. I got caught. I think they thought it was you. I'm sorry. Be careful. Well, he made up that lie in November of 2003. Oh, you were faking through all that. Discredit me. Get rid of me real quick. It had nothing to do with the Vegas. Not a damn thing. Six months later after a traffic accident, I had nothing to do with him making up a shitty lie. Like my neighbor Becky. It's insanity that they want any kind of attention on somebody just saying something mean about you. Had nothing to do with him. Exactly. Now I want you to think. I told him that that guy tried to kidnap me before. Before I can say Terry seen him. He said now, oh come on now. I've met with all those church people and that family. That lost their kid in a traffic accident. Fifteen years before I had nothing to do with. Making up a shit, blowing smoke up his ass. 
Some guy said he found them disgusting, using their family's tragedy to kill people. It is disgusting. And I met with all of them. And I know that they're trying to kill you because you were faking you were sick and faking you got well with that family screw. And it's like, I really was sick. I almost fucking died. They damaged my heart. If I would have turned them into the state, the state were for negligence is one to eight years and a million and a half dollar fine. You got insurance fraud and everything else. They would have went to jail a long time for what they did to me. But I thank God I never turned them in. <clears throat> state alone would have took care of them. I said, I really was sick. He's like, you liar. I met with that family in my office and those church people. I know they're trying to kill you because you were faking you were sick and faking you got well when that family was grieving. It's like, I really was sick. Was there a camera above that bench or not? I don't know. You either say you're lying or I'll put you in jail. I'm like, what? And he starts screaming it. Say it or I'll put you in jail. It's like, fine, whatever. Ha, ha, ha. Now I want you to say you were faking you were sick before. That's ridiculous. I almost died. I had six to ten surgeries. My muscles locked up. Then those crackpots almost killed me. And then nine months of slowly getting well. I was really sick. It's like I really was sick before. He's like, you liar. I have met with that family in my office and all those church people. And I know they're trying to kill you because you were faking you were sick. And faking you got well with that family was grieving. You need to realize what you've done. And I don't blame him for trying to kill you. He actually said so. Like those ladies said, we found that tape. None of this is funny. Oh, I got ungodly levels. I said, I really was like, you either say it or I'll leave you there. And I'm like, but they'll try to kill me so. They've tried to kill me so. You either say it or I'll leave you there. Okay. And I start begging this bastard for my No, say it or I'll leave you there. And it's like, fine, just don't let him kill me. Okay. <sighs> All right. And he starts going, ha, 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 ha. So then he, um, <sighs> he's like, why would the FBI help a person like you? Well, they're going to try to kill me. It's a sworn duty. He's like, so, I said, they've tried to kill me. So, give me a real reason. The other guy yells out the scam of Pete. Well, we could use Pete's tape of weird with yourself. The shower seat in the other room done as this extortion act. The stocking tapes by the cartel. I don't even know who Pete is. The only Pete I know is my brother Medina. I said, what are you talking about? Because it's photoshopped. And they laughed, they photoshopped it. And I said, um... I don't know what you're talking about. He, he's, he's laughing. He says something about where I, again, about Pete. Now, I've never talked to him. Where I had black and blue marks throwing up. He's laughing at me for my rapist. The guy that had been drugging me up, beating, raping me all summer long. Going to all my family physicians for all the signs of being drugged, beating, raped. He's making fun of me for my rapist. That's running a scam on me. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. How would you like to wake up with bruises? And not know what happened to you. And some serial rapist is raping you. And running a scam on you. That's how not funny this is. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I bet you're going to say you don't know about this doctor selling your information. HIPAA violations. No doctor of yours can talk to them without written consent. It's one to five years and a quarter million dollar fine. They lose their license. And then find out it's some guy impersonating a doctor. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about. Why had some ladies steal my insurance information that her Dave gave it to her and she ran up all kinds of bills? I thought, well, maybe it's one of her bills. Here's just some guy. Okay? And he's laughing at me. Stop. She don't know. I didn't know jack shit, buddy. And then he's like, give me a real reason. I tell him about my brother-in-law, Craig, that died working for the government. 
Then he, he's like, have you talked to any law enforcement in this area? I told him about two silly cops on August 8th of 18. I had a light in the security system at midnight. They came out and they said it looked like an alien orb or an angry spirit. And I thought they were dehydrated and I offered him water. He started laughing. He said, stop. Uh, or he said, uh, you're kidding, right? I said, an alien orb or an angry spirit. I thought they were dehydrated. Who talks like that? I kept trying to give him water. You started laughing. You're kidding, right? And I said no. And then they told me out in the country, you buy a big dog and let it open the door and let the dog in. They don't want bothered out here. And um, then he said, well, I could take you somewhere and leave you with no money. I don't have money to start. He said, like, well, if you agree to get information on David and the churches, I can open an informant program. Well, Katie is telling three people in the mall I've been in their church with the four attempts on my life. That it was them trying to kill me. I thought, well, it'll last a few weeks and they'll get them. Nobody else will get hurt. And I'll be set for life. I can do that. So, um, I'll open an account with 5000 a month. Um, and you'll have a life of peace as an informant. Nothing legally stated, dated against you again. And only for you and only for you would we ever do this. Where we'll always put it back as if it never happened. Even when you tell, you can't be legally charged for anything again for working this case. Admit to no wrongdoing. And I'll take care of everything in that. And if you try to tell someone, unless you're crazy, you know, and no one will help you. 14th Amendment, you cannot withhold protection. And you can't see somebody's money. He stole the money on the first day and fed me back to the cartel. The cartel right away started telling everybody how they had framed me. They photoshopped all their lies, where she had bruises before, throwing up, heart racing, that we were, they were drug beat and raping her. They drugged her up and told her to say all kinds of crazy crap. They erased some guy named Chris out of the room. And laughing at me, then it's funny she doesn't know what's going on. It's funny she doesn't know what we're actually doing. Well, they're telling everybody they framed me. It's like, what on earth? One of the guys that worked for the drug war came up and said they're exposing corrupt law enforcement in this area publicly. They even said they set them off. Hartville the other day, they found it. 18 and 19. They've been after FBI agent John the whole time. Sent him off to be exposed that he's stealing from cases. That's what's going on.